there's a tendency, especially in elementary classes, to do integrated activities where you might try and merge the arts with social studies. So he talks about an example of teachers who have kids create like a Japanese style fish on plates that might be painted. Quote, such an activity produces Japanese-like images and is designed to give students the flavor of Japanese culture. Of course, it is very easy to convert art programs into handmaidens for learning the social studies or history without providing youngsters with occasions for developing artistic judgment or securing aesthetic forms of experience that make effective art education. It is possible to dilute art programs and to delude oneself that art is being taught when in fact there is little in the way of artistic activity going on, end quote. It's from page 154. So Eisner goes on to talk about how this form of integration is really just kind of taking artistic processes without actually creating artistic thinking or artistic ways of being into the activity. So you're using art in what might be described as like a subservient way to focus on the social studies without really focusing on the art. This is often done by social studies teachers who do not have a background in art and don't necessarily feel comfortable teaching those concepts and practices, which is why I've talked about how in other podcasts that you can work with or collaborate with other educators who are more experienced. So if you have a computer science person and you are going to integrate with a science activity, cool, partner with the science teacher, find ways to integrate in meaningful ways that are both meaningful for science education and computer science education. Don't just integrate computer science into the science class and skim the surface of basic vocabulary of computer science concepts. Actually get kids creating things with those concepts and understandings. Ideally things that solve problems that are relevant to the students that you work with.